this will be a blow. It's a day at the beach, but it certainly will not be easy for the 43 men vying for the title of the fittest on earth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the opening event of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler, and Bill, once again, we're starting in the water, no shocker there. I love it, it's become tradition that we test these guys with the swimming event right out of the gates, and every year it's gotten more and more and more distance for these swimmers, and swimming is not known as something that CrossFitters are good at, so it's gonna be a big one to see what these guys can do. Ever since 2011, we have started the CrossFit Games on a Wednesday, and traditionally that day has been extremely grueling. Today will be no different. The 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games will start Wednesday, July 23rd at this location. You need to know what we've done in the past so you know what might come in the future or how we might... Okay. All right, here's what's on tap for the opening day at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. Men's event one, the beach, coming up next, followed by the women. And then the teams, for the first time ever on Wednesday, get into the water. Then tonight, we move over to the StubHub Center, 9.30 Eastern time, the women's event number two. That's the max overhead squat, and then the men after that. Oh, we're not going, okay. Uh, all right. We have up the ante here, Bill, as far as the distance that we're swimming. And for the first time since being on a beach, they actually have to get into the water more than once. I love that they're doing it multiple times. That's really going to test their, ability, their swimming abilities. But they're starting off 250-yard swim, coming out of the water and going right to some kettlebell thrusters with 35-pound dumbbells. They have to hit 50 of them. Right to face in the sand, 30 burpees. Send them back out in the water around the pier for a 500-yard swim. 30 burpees, 50 kettlebell swims, and back on the beach again for another 250-yard swim. Rory McKernan is another member of our broadcast team, and he has the best assignment. He'll be hanging out on the beach all day. Rory with a closer look at what faces these athletes. You could not ask for a more beautiful day to start the CrossFit Games here at Hermosa Beach. 70 degrees and getting warmer all the time, but the athletes, of course, are not here for a leisurely time, so this is your CrossFit Games surf report. This morning online, they said these waves were spineless, zero to one feet. But when I talked to the lifeguard, he said we're dealing with some wind chop. They're picking up and dropping down. They're disorganized. Now, typically, the swim back in is easier than the swim out. But CrossFit New England's coach Ben Bergeron snuck onto the course this morning and said he was so exhausted by the time he was coming back in, he couldn't even body surf. He just went out to the white buoy, which is the first swim. As if that weren't enough, the athletes on the way out and in have to deal with this substantial drop off. Yeah, we're, no, not yet, almost. So that was. Okay. 45. Eric, that was about four and a half. Thirty to air. Five minutes to the race. 20 to air. 15 to air. We are hot in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're up. It's a day at the beach, but it certainly will not be easy for the 43 men vying for the title of fittest on earth. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the opening event of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler, and once again, Bill, we're starting off in the water. I love the tradition that we start the guys swimming right out of the gates for the CrossFit Games, and every year it's gotten more yardage and more yardage and more yards, and we are testing these athletes this time. I cannot wait. The athletes coming into the games knew they would be starting on a beach, but that was about it. Traditionally, day one has been extremely grueling at the CrossFit Games, and today will be no different. The 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games will start Wednesday, July 23rd at this location. You need to know what we've done in the past so you know what might come in the future or how we might be influenced over the years by certain things. 
there could be a theme. We could have a theme of something that follows all the way through. One minute in the package. There's a lot of ways we play with it and we look at it. And uh, you know, you're gonna be doing CrossFit. We're gonna give you some fins. And we got these pretty 45. cool single speed Jeff, mountain bikes. You hear bikes. too much of me, let me know and I'll turn my TV off. Come on, we jump right on oh, there. He's a nice guy, let him in. And again, we are starting in the water. 30 to your back your end. second event for Wednesday, you will row 21,097 meters. In addition to the rip currents, you also saw a white shark. 20 to the back. 15. Two and a half to your race. 10. Tim, Tim, sorry, sorry. That's 2014 surprise. Five Get to your here. back. Get out of Four, here. three, two, one, and Two events for the individuals today, one for the teams. It's men's know. event one up next, followed by the women, and then for the Just first working. time ever at the CrossFit Games, the teams hit the water. Tonight, we move to the stub up center. We're coming women. up on two minutes on to race. Number two, that's the max overhead squat. That's at 930 Eastern. And then the men after that. We start in the water. They got to swim in open water, which is never easy. But now they also have to deal with kettlebell thrusters and burpees. I love it. We're getting in the water three different times. So we start off at 250 yard swim, 50 kettlebell thrusters with 35 pound dumbbells, 30 Top burpees with sand in the face, and send them back on the water for 500 yard swim around the pier. And reverse that 30 burpees, 50 kettlebell thrusters, and then 250 yard swim again back onto the sand. Rory McKernan is on the beach with a closer look at what is up next for these athletes. You're about 90 to your My race. friends, you could not ask for a more beautiful day at Hermosa Beach. 70 degrees and getting hotter as the sun goes up, but the athletes aren't here for a leisurely time, of course. So I checked this morning, surfline.com called these spineless waves, zero to one feet. But as you can see behind me, there's a wind chop. The lifeguard who I spoke to earlier said it's more like two to three feet and very disorganized because of the wind. He also said the way in is typically easier than the way out, but I saw CrossFit New England's coach Ben Bergeron sneak onto One the course. He swam the first lap out to the white buoy and said he was so exhausted on the way in he couldn't even body surf. As if that weren't enough, the athletes have to deal with a substantial drop-off on the way out and in. Thank you, Rory. All 43 45. men going in this event, Jason Kalipa and Rich Froning, the two former champions, but also a lot of men who have swimming experience. Uh, Joni Koski, who was on the Finnish youth national team, and he's only 19, so that's not very far out. You know he's going to be strong in the water. 30. Kenneth Leverage, a California kid, you know he's always good in the water. Uh, Josh Bridges has won right, a, Jeff, one of the ocean events before, by. so you know that he's going to be strong here today, swimming in the water and being on the sand. And then right there, Jordan Troyan, he won the event last year, swimming in last year's event. But Con Porter, lifeguard extraordinaire, Should he's going to be tough. 10. The Australians have done well Nine, traditionally here eight, in open seven, water events. The last six, time that we were in race. the open Four, water, it was Chad three, McKay from Australia. Two, who was extremely well. He's not competing this year, but event number one underway as the athletes make their way into the water for that initial 250 yard swim. And you know, Bill, better than anybody. You can train in a pool, you can learn to swim there, but swimming in a pool and swimming in open water are two completely different things. They are absolutely different. The, the, with the pool swimming, you, you have the line on the bottom of the pool, you have your goggles, everything's a, it's a, a controlled setting. The ocean or open water is completely opposite of that. You have currents, you have to deal with waves, you can't see everyone, you can't see who's gonna be kicking you, grabbing you. So a lot of swimmers will panic in this in this situation, especially if they aren't very experienced in swimming. I'll tell you right out of the gate how fast these athletes are going in. I'm shocked because earlier, I mean, we saw all the athletes when they heard the the announcement, they were not fired up. I would say there was maybe five to eight of them that were excited about here in this event, knowing what they're going to have to uh, you know tackle, but they were charging into the water. So. Hopefully, and apparently, obviously, we have a lot of experience, a lot of practice has gone in over the last year to get these guys ready for the water events. We were talking to a lot of these athletes leading up to today, and I think that quick start could be attributed to the fact that they were all just ready to go. Let's hope that adrenaline doesn't get the best of them, but this is the first time that the athletes found out that they were going to be starting at the beach. They knew it was going to be a beach. They didn't know what. Once that announcement was made, teams that, or athletes that 
were closer to the coast immediately headed to their nearest beach and started working on you know, getting into the water, swimming in open water, doing stuff on the sand. They were trying to figure out whatever they could to maybe get a jump on what Dave Castro was going to program for them. And for those rookies, if this is their first time, if they heard this event and they were a swimmer, they instantly were excited. And if you watch the strokes of some of these athletes, the, the, the quote unquote swimmers, you know exactly who they are. They are smooth in the water. They are calm in the water. Stroke is really long. They're able to time their breathing when they look up and put their head back into the water as they make their way around the buoy. That's the classic sign of a good swimmer. The non-swimmers, you're going to see breast stroking, side stroking, head's going to be up the whole time. And that's going to do nothing but tire them out over the course of this thousand meter swims are going to have to do. That's okay. I'm thinking That's the buoy you. that they need to swim around to okay. make their way in. We'll get a better look at your leaders once they emerge from the water and make their way up the beach for the 50 kettlebell thrusters and the 30 burpees. 35 pounds kettlebells for the men and then 30 burpees after that. I can see the rollers are coming in. What these, what these athletes want to do on the way out is try to get under that swell that's coming towards them to save some energy. But on the way in, they want to use the energy of that wave to bring them back into the beach. So once they can kind of generate enough speed to kind of match the speed of that wave, just get in a nice streamlined position and just relax and let the wave do the rest of the work. The, the ocean swimmers, the lifeguards, they know that. So they, they, in their mind, they don't have to swim halfway. They swim out, let the water do the rest of the work on the way back in. About five or six athletes have separated themselves from the pack, and again, we'll get a better look at all of them as they emerge from the water to find out who your leaders are. But it looks like in the red swim cap, that could be Con Porter, one of the men that we highlighted at the beginning. He has lifeguard experience over open water experience as well. But that's all well and good. Now you got to throw some weight around and do some burpees, and that'll be something that probably brings the field a little closer together. And I think that after the last year's event, when they did the, the pool swim and then the muscle-ups, I think that people have started to practice that. Do a little swimming, do a little bit of work. But again, this is very raw. It's a very raw setting. It's open water, and then you have to go and do all that work in the sand. That's really going to change that, that just, just pressure that you're putting on your body. And it's not the first round going into the water and coming out. It's the second one going around the pier where we are really going to see a separation between the between the field. First athlete out of the water, I believe that is Jordan Troyon, who no surprise there. Jordan won the opening event last year, the pool. He's an All-American swimmer, four-time All-American swimmer at Westchester University. And he knew he had other swimmers against him in this event. So he couldn't just go last year. He was, he was saying, this is my jam. I knew I'm going to do great here. He has not just one or two good swimmers, but about eight to yeah, ten good it. swimmers Thank that he has down. to contend with. So here's what he needs to do now. Get up onto the sand, control, contain his energy get into those thrusters and really make his way and try and try and save some energy so we can get back into the water and really excel where he's good which is on the swim. Jordan Troyon as you saw him walk up the beach was shaking out his arms getting warmed up and now 50 thrusters with 35 pound kettlebells in each hand then he has to do some burpees and Jordan Troyon looked pretty tired after that initial 250 yard swim. I think he was just, he wanted to make sure he got a good jump out to the front. So I don't know if he's tired per se. I think he's being controlled right now. Uh, controlling that energy. And if you watch these guys on their thrusters, they need to make sure that they get the full extension and get all the way down. So I mean, that, that, that's a lot of work these guys are having to do. And you can see the difference in some of the strokes right here. Here's Alex Netty. He was one of the worst swimmers last year in the pool event. He is struggling. So you can see that they have the guards there just in case they have any kind of an issue if they need some help to get back into, in, into the beach. More athletes starting to make their way up the beach. Lucas Hoberg, number 45, is one of them. And Jordan Troyon on the right side closest to you at home. Continuing to work on his initial set of 50 kettlebell thrusters. That man is easy to identify. That is Lucas Parker out of Canada West. Next to him is Neil Maddox. And I talked to Neil. White swim cap. And I talked to Neil last night. He was saying he just wants to be in the middle of the pack. He's not looking to try to win. He just wants to be in the middle. As long as he's not last, and he's he's pretty excited about that. 100 points go to the winner of this event. 95 to second place, 90 to third, and so on and so forth as we work our way down the standings. That deficit changes to three points and one point down the standings and then two points beyond that so 100 points to the winner here you're certainly not going to win the crossfit games by winning this one event but you can certainly set your setup self up well heading into the weekend now most of these athletes when they do thrusters you'll see people on instagram and youtube doing thrusters with 135 pounds 185 pounds 
This technically is only 70 pounds. Not a big deal. How, however, with those kettlebells, it's a lot of stability that they have to do, which is going to tax their shoulders. 50 of those going right into 50 or uh, right into 30 burpees, their upper body is going to be wrecked having to get back into the water. So, how relaxed are the experienced swimmers going to be having to head around, how, having to head out around the pier for that 500 meters is going to be interesting to watch. But the damage it's done to the non-swimmers is going to be really hard to watch the next time they get in the water. But this is going to do damage. Cole Sager, one of the rookies from the Northwest with the hands on his hips as Jordan Troyon has finished his set of thrusters and now on to 30 burpees. And this has got to be uncomfortable in the sand. On the left of your screen, Alex Netty now making his way up the beach. You can see Jordan, Jordan Troyan is just really trying to save his arms. He's dropping down to his elbows, not trying to do an extra push-up. Super smart strategy right there. And again, it's sand, so you can really hit the, hit the deck pretty rough. Now, one thing these guys, if they think about it, and I don't know if they'll have time to think about it, is you can actually morph the sand bottom to fit you. So you may not have to go down as deep as you normally would in your normal gym. You know, go down, kind of kick those feet back, and it really isn't fully flat. So that's a plus on their side. But guess what? They have a whole bunch of sand in their face, and that's a big negative because when you're that tired, you don't want to be eating and gritting on sand the whole time for the rest of the, the rest of the race. Jordan Troyon continuing to move steadily here. He is your leader in event number one, the beach for the men, all 43 men. And that looks like Jeff Evans, who had his hands on the board, Evans now continuing to swim, so he is way behind the pack here. Jordan Troy on your leader, still working through the burpees. Now on his last set of 15. They complete 15 burpees in one quadrant, then they move up to the second quadrant and compete their second set of burpees. And I believe that is Josh Bridges in the blue trunks and silver swim cap, so no surprise that Josh Bridges is up there challenging Jordan Troyon. As the fans look on, lining the pier here at Hermosa Beach, they were encouraged to get here on their own power. Not a lot of parking, so <laughs> plenty of them probably walked, rode bikes, jogged, whatever, but they're, they're about three or four deep on that pier on both sides. Past the nine minute mark, Jordan Troyon in the yellow trunks, close to your screen, continues to be your leader. Remember, Troyon won the first event of the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games that started in the pool. That's Richard Bolkin now making his way up the beach. Bolkin also a CrossFit Games rookie. You can see all these athletes are being real smart about going down to the ground, saving their arms, not using them as much as they can. But there's Jordan heading out to the water. And again, this is where he's going to be strong. He knows that Josh Bridges is right behind him. Josh is extremely fast on the thrusters and on the burpees. So he needs to make his mark on the swim. And this, I mean, he's so smooth in the water, so calm and collective. And he also was a beach guard. So again, he has this, this open water experience. Josh Bridges trying to reel in. Jordan Troyon Bridges making his way into the water as well. Rich Froning. The defending three-time champion is also on his final 15 burpees. So Rich Froning is a guy who last year at the pool suffered his worst finish ever. He finished 30th, but still managed to win the CrossFit Games. If Froning finishes anywhere inside the top 15, that is a <laughs> huge win for him. That'll be a gigantic <laughs> placing for him. He knows that the swimming is not his strong point, so all he has, to, I mean, if he can creep up to the top 15, that's going to be giant. Back at the 30, at least they shoved him down into a hole a little bit, so that everyone was a little bit safe. But it really didn't didn't save anyone by the end of the getting by the end of the rain. weekend last oh, year. More on. men have finished up their set of 30 burpees and are now back into the water. Now this is the chunk of the event. This is a 500 <laughs> meter swim around the pier, and this is where you're going to separate most of the field because already that first swim was extremely difficult, but now this is where these guys make their money. And now Rich Froning has made his way down to the water. Rich Froning in great position here in the opening event. The four-time defending Central East region champ. He has owned that region. In fact, the last time Rich Froning finished second in an individual competition was the 2011 
Open. He has won every individual competition he has been in since then. Jordan Troyon, your leader on the right. Rich Froning on the left. Jordan Troyon trying to make it back-to-back -back years, winning the opening event at the CrossFit Games. Right there, Jordan Troyan, so smooth in the water. If you watch what he's doing with his breathing, for the most part, his head goes to the side, but to keep on track, he'll lift his head up and then drop his head to the side. That's exactly what a long distance open water swimmer will do. It allows him to keep real good body positioning. And then when he moved to the opposite side, when he saw him actually breathe towards the camera, he was looking at the pier to make sure he's not moving too far away. So he knows exactly where he is, basically kind of triangulating, triangulating his position in the water. That's a super strong, very experienced swimmer. It's all about efficiency when it comes to swimming. And the less you're going to do this zigzagging in the water, the straighter line, the better. And he's doing perfect. Cody Anderson, one of the rookies, you just saw him getting into the water, and now Jordan Troyan continue continues to make his way down the pier. He will turn around at the end and then swim back, and then it's 30 burpees, 50 kettlebell thrusters, and then a run to the finish line. And now Neil Maddox from the Northern California region back into the water as well. So more and more men starting this second and longest swim of this event. And you talked about it earlier. It is very easy for inexperienced open water swimmers to get lost out there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's a long ways. Yeah, it doesn't seem you, like it would be hard to swim in a straight line, but in open water, it really is. Well, you just have no, you have no connection with where you are. It's hard to see what's out in front of you. It's hard to tell. I mean, you're being sloshed back and forth. It really does mess with your entire mindset. So as long as these athletes are able to, and even the, the less experienced athletes, as long as they can keep their head focused straight, keep their eyes straight on a particular object and move towards that, they should be okay. They have to make sure they don't get panicked though. And that, I, that's what I think a lot of the athletes, if they have issues, that will blow their, their, their whole mindset. Five athletes have separated themselves from the pack. It's Jordan Troy on the, in the lead. Josh Britt is right behind him, and then three athletes battling it out for third place. We approach the 14 minute mark here of the opening event of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. It's the beach, there's a 50 minute time cap. After the men go, the women take on the beach. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan. You guys talked about getting disoriented in the water. So on the way out, the spotting is easy. These guys just have one target to go for. The buoys are fairly easy to see when you come up in the water. But we heard athletes complaining on the way back in when they pop up, this sun is just coming up in the California sky. So in addition to being disoriented by the waves, you've also got that sun in your eyes. Thank you, Ro. Jordan Troyon continuing to lead this event. Getting close to making the turn at the end of the pier and work his way back and still looking extremely smooth here in open water. You know, when you watch a, an experienced swimmer, they just look so graceful in the water, even when they're moving super fast. It doesn't look like he's expending a lot of energy, and in reality, he isn't, and that's what's perfect about that stroke. If you look at any of the other swimmers, they're actually fighting through the water. It's just wasting a ton of energy. Troy on around that buoy. That's the 250-yard mark, and now he makes his way back in for his set of 30 burpees then 50 kettlebell thrusters, and then one final 250-meter swim. Josh Bridges starting to track him down just a little bit. Josh Bridges currently sits in second place. In 2011, when we had a beach event, Josh Bridges won that event. He did not compete in 2012 when we opened the CrossFit Games at Camp Pendleton with that long swim, the bike, and then the long-distance run. The leader, though, continues to be Jordan Troyon trying to go back-to-back -back years and winning the opening event at the CrossFit Games. Move a little farther away, a little closer to here. So little smooth in the water, watch it, watch it. just absolute grace in the water. Top three athletes in the front, Troyon behind him, Josh Bridges, trying to get a look at who that is, who's now pushing Josh Bridges for second place. But all of a sudden, this is getting a lot closer Josh Bridges is on the right of your screen. He is in the blue. Two athletes behind him. So Bridges could do himself a lot of favors by with a second place finish here because you know coming up tonight, that overhead squad event is not something that he is looking forward to. It's not his strength. I think he was extremely excited when he heard what this one was. You know, being in the Navy, he's spent a lot of time in the water. 
Uh, he's very strong when it comes to any kind of body weight movements or a, a light. That's a relatively a light thruster. So for him, that was going to be the easy part. And he's just a strong swimmer. I wouldn't say that technically he's spectacular, but he's just so strong in the water. He's very comfortable. Jordan Troyon about halfway down the pier. He'll come out of the water, and then it's 30 burpees, 50 kettlebell thrusters at 35 pounds each, and then one final 250-meter swim. Jordan has probably about 100, 150 meter distance between him and Josh Bridges right now. That's exactly what he needs to spend. You know he's gonna, you know that Josh is gonna catch him on the on the burpees and the thrusts. He's just going to. That's why he has to get as much distance as possible. Let's send it back down to Rory McKernan. Guys, I'm with the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Dave, it's come a tradition that we're doing events here, sometimes in the ocean. What's unique about this year? What's unique about this event is the fact that uh, we're having them enter and exit and re-enter and exit and re-enter so the water multiple times. And in between that, the ocean multiple times. Last year we did the pool. We've never had them do that in the ocean. And um, this year we've added some load to this, uh, to the swim event, to the swim ocean event. We've never had load, that being the kettlebells and the thruster. So this is a more uh, CrossFit chipper with the ocean, with returning in and out of the ocean. And, and with these waves, with what's happening here, that mentally pushes these guys like, damn it. I knew that was hard going in and I knew that was hard coming out. I still have to do that two more times. And uh, so far it's playing as I'd expect. Jordan's in the lead. Josh Bridges caught him on some of this stuff and Josh is on his tail. And we're at about 10 minutes from, or uh, eight minutes from when Jordan entered the water on the 500 leg, he's about to come in. And after doing all that work, and finishing a 500, which is going to look like eight, eight and a half, nine minutes, that's a really fast 500 after doing all that. So this is this is impressive. You know, it's biased obviously towards the swim. So the swimmers are showing uh, their stuff, but the but the CrossFit kettlebell burpee stuff is uh, is contributing to the overall effect. So quickly, having said that, we knew these two individuals would do great. What do you think about the the quality of the swimming of the rest of the field? Yeah, there's some people in the back who are having some major issues. I'm overall impressed. It seems like the group's closer, uh, at least on the 250. And uh, But there's some in the back. There's always going to be those outliers who are having some issues. Here comes Jordan. i got to go. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Ro. Jordan Troyon running out of the water, taking a look behind him to see where Josh Bridges is. And now Jordan Troyon with a little bit of a sense of urgency because he knows that the man behind him can certainly track him down on the movements coming up. <laughs> he doesn't want to go head to head with Josh on burpees in, in, in a lighter thruster like that. But you know what? He's moving a lot faster now than he was earlier the last time they came back up uh, out of the water. So I think that's a good thing. And he knows, he, he looked back every single time to see exactly where, where he is so he can pace himself and do what he needs to do. Rich Froding, the three-time defending champion who suffered his worst finish ever at the CrossFit Games last year in the water when he placed 30th at the pool, is doing extremely well here. If he is, again, inside the top 15, that is, you got to consider that a win for Rich Froning. That's an absolute win for Rich Froning. I mean, he, last year he was really upset after right. that swim and he he granted he has spent a lot of time in the water over the course over the course of the last year which is great he needed to do that and again not to win the event but just to make so he doesn't have such a hole to fight out of jordan tryon in his first set of 15 burpees and tryon is a great example of you can win the opening event but that doesn't mean you're going to win the crossfit games won the opening event last year finished 24th so guys who do well here doesn't necessarily mean you're going to carry well, that this momentum is into the weekend. This is definitely set up to be a yes, swimmer. You know? And then the CrossFit Games is not a swimming event overall. Uh, but it, just like anything else, if you have something that plays to your strengths, man, you got to you got to do it when it's your time. And, and Jordan's doing just that. Jordan Troyon now onto his second set of 15 burpees. More athletes coming out of the water. Looks like Yona Koski out of Europe, the, one of the younger competitors in this competition, Yonakoski has been coached by 2009 CrossFit Games champion Miko Salo. Not a bad guy to have in your corner. Oh, I'd love to have him as a coach. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> but what's great about about Yoni is he's 19 years old. He is just a young pup compared to these guys. And man, just imagine the CrossFit career he has ahead of him starting at 19. He's the finished version of Ben Smith. He is Yonakoski, a CrossFit Verasto in Finland. Bill said 19 years old and is now sitting in second place in this event. 
Josh Bridges has now fallen to fourth place. Making his way up the beach for 30 burpees. That looks like Tyson Takasaki, who's ahead of Josh Bridges, but it's Jordan Troyon, who's still your leader. That was Con Porter, pardon me, not Tyson Takasaki. Con Porter is now in third, and it's Josh Bridges in fourth. Your top four, Jordan Troyon. Jordan behind him. Con Porter sits in third place, and it's Josh Bridges currently in fourth. But Jordan Troyon all by himself as he is widening his lead here on the men who are trying to track him down. Craig Kenny making his way out of the water. So in the last section of this event, they could save their arms before they went back in the water by kind of flopping onto the ground with the burpees. Here they start with the burpees and then they have to blast their arms in those thrusters then get back in the water. So we're going to see if the thruster heading back in the water is going to have any kind of issue with these guys' shoulders. Jordan Troyon in his first set of 25 kettlebell thrusters. When he's done with those 25, he moves into that next section. He is on the right of your screen in the yellow trunks behind him. The 19-year-old Finn Yonikoski having a great showing in the opening event here at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. Five to go. For Jordan Troyon, he's through 20 of those 50 thrusters and has a pretty comfortable lead here. And if he can keep this and then get back in the water, it's pretty much over. He's doing exactly what he needs to do, which was build through this entire event. He looked worse off in the first quarter than he does now. And that's what's impressive with Jordan. Jordan Troyon last year said they basically grooved him a pitch in that opening event. It was in a <laughs> pool and it had bar muscle ups. And he said those are two things that he is extremely good at. He said it was like someone handed him $3,000 because the winner of each event here at the CrossFit Games gets $3,000. Now here comes Rich Froning. Rich Froning is doing extremely well considering that swimming is his biggest weakness and possibly his only weakness. If Rich Froning stays in the top 15 here, he is setting himself up extremely well heading into the weekend. He has put a lot of work in on his swimming in the offseason and it certainly shows here. You know, I don't know if it's just a pool thing or what, but he had a really rough time in the pool. Back at the Pendleton event, he actually did pretty well there, getting out of the water, coming out in the middle of the pack. So maybe he's just a better open water swimmer, but it's looking like he's in basically the top 12 right now, and that is gigantic for him and detrimental to the rest of the field for the rest of the weekend. You have to assume that Rich Froney is going to do extremely well tonight in the overhead squad. He might do okay. It's he very okay. likely given this finish and then what he does tonight, that he could be in the lead after day one. That was not wow. the case last year. Rich had to battle back and didn't take the lead until the clean and jerk event on Saturday, and then close it out in typical Rich Froning fashion on Sunday with three straight victories for his third straight CrossFit Games championship. Froning on the right, getting to work on his burpees. Jordan Troyon finishing up his final set of kettlebell thrusters, and then it's back in the water for a 250 meter swim and then across the finish line Jordan Troyon looking to go back to back years winning the opening event at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. Now Yona Koski has moved up to challenge Troyon so Koski starting to reel Troyon in a little bit. You saw Troyon see that and then immediately pick up those kettlebells. And there he goes he's right back in the water so he knows he has a 25 rep advantage which is going to give him about 100 meters and that's what exactly what he needs. Let's send it back down to Roe, who's been spending the morning on the beach. Guys, in order to pace himself, it looked like Troyan would leave his goggles at each transition. He'd take the time to walk back, grab the goggles, and he had a nice, easy pace. Getting in the water first, he knows all he has to do is that last 250 meter swim, and he looks super confident. As he's entering the water, there's three athletes still struggling with their 500 meter swim. We'll check in with them in just a minute. Now Jordan Troyon back in the water. Not only does he have to deal with the waves, but now he has to avoid fellow competitors coming the other way. That's how far he is ahead of some of the other athletes who are not doing too well dealing with the swim. I actually think that he is, for him, relaxing in the water. He's, he can just open up, stretch out, and you, just like you were talking about, athletes coming in, he's going to have to maneuver around them, but he's the one who can actually feel comfortable enough to do that. Just lay himself in the water, Stay nice and plain. Don't fight the water. Breathe as much as he can. Try and keep his breathing as regular as he can so that he, he, he isn't, you know, forcing. He doesn't have to force it. This is his resting spot. 
100 points for the winner. Josh Bridges in the blue trunks and silver swim cap. There's at the white swim cap. Now moving his way into the water as well. So now it's Josh Bridges who looks to be in second place as he has passed 19-year-old Yonikoski. This is going to be big again for Bridges because, like we said earlier, that overhead squad event is tonight. Just one rep max events are not in Josh Bridges' wheelhouse. And this is what Josh has always had a, a, a history of doing. The, the events that he should do well in, he just does great at. The other ones where he doesn't do so well, he really doesn't do so well. So he needs to make sure that wherever he can place high, to really place high. Josh Bridges was only one of three men to win three events last year at the CrossFit Games. Jordan Troyan approaching that buoy, but Josh Bridges did well, like he said, in some events, won three of them, but in the ones he didn't do well at, his weaknesses really, really hurt him. So tonight with that overhead squad event, he's gonna have to do some damage control. Con Porter out of Australia, making his way back into the water. Con Porter, a guy with some lifeguarding experience, has done a lot of open water swimming, and traditionally, Australians have done extremely well in these open, open water events. You can just tell the experience. If, you, if you're a swimmer and you have experience, it definitely shows here. I mean, you are far and away in front of the pack, and then it becomes a race of about five people. Everyone else is just trying to hang in there, trying to get towards number 10 or 15 or whatever, but like those top guys, I mean, when you're good at this, wow, I mean, it really shows. Jordan Troyan has made the turn and now making his way back to the beach. This is the final 250 meter swim for Troyan and then he has to make his way to the finish line and that will officially end his time. Rich Froning, typical Rich Froning fashion. Doesn't look like he's going quickly, but he's going extremely smoothly. Just doesn't stop. Just, just doesn't stop. Just keeping that pace. <laughs> Plenty of athletes going through their final set of kettlebell thrusters. Jordan Troyan has left them all in his wake as he is making his way back to the beach. And Jordan Troyan, when they tested this event, there was a certain time that they thought some of these athletes would hit. Jordan Troyan is annihilating that time. <laughs> he is well, well in front of what they thought the average time would be. But we would expect that. You know, I, I, I think that when Dave Castro put this together, and was trying to figure out what the time cap would be. I mean, they weren't they weren't basing it off of Jordan Troyan's time or any of the other really good swimmers. They're gonna they're gonna try and look to see where the middle of the pack is gonna be. Jordan Troyan had a heck of a battle at the regionals too in the Mid-Atlantic. There was no guarantee that he was gonna get back. He finished third there behind Ben Smith and Nate Schrader, and that was somewhat of a surprise given the competition there. And now Troyan is out of the water up the beach and making his way towards the finish line. So it's going to be back to back opening event victories for Jordan Troyan. He won the pool event in 2013 and now Troyan will take the beach. 100 points for Jordan Troyan as he once again chalks up a victory in the opening event of the CrossFit Games. You know, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say that we're really good, but we called that one. We knew that the swimmers would do great. Yep. We knew that he would be in there. I honestly thought that he'd be pushed a little bit more uh, by by Yoni Koski. Uh, but wow, I mean, Jordan annihilated that. He built the entire time all the way through that and just crushed it at the end. Jordan Troyan signing his scorecard and cashing in on 100 points and also $3,000 for winning the event. On the left of your screen is the three-time defending CrossFit Games champion. That's Rich Froning okay, making so his way back into the water. The battle right for second and third. Yona Koski is ahead now of Josh Bridges. Koski's in the blue cap. Bridges is in the white cap. 19-year-old Yona Koski trying to hold off Josh Bridges. And you can see Bridges keeps taking a look at Yona Koski. Now Koski looking behind him to see where Bridges is. But Koski looks like he's widening that lead. So the 19-year-old European Yona Koski could rack up 95 points. Bridges, if he stays in third, will get 90, and that is going to be huge for both of them. I'm waiting to see if any of these swimmers right now, either Josh or Yoni, are, are, are going to be able to catch a wave in. Because if Josh could get a wave, he could actually pass Yoni Koski just based on that alone. So they have to be smart, not try to touch the ground too soon. But once they hit the beach, it's time to start moving. Koski coming out of the water. He's got some kelp <laughs> draped over his shoulder. And now trying to do just that, catch that wave on the way in and lengthen the distance between him and Josh Bridges. Yona Koski looking back at Bridges, and it looks like Koski's going to lock up second place. Josh Bridges solidly in third. 
19-year-old Yonikoski having the way to the finish line pointed out for him. He's taking a look to see if anybody's around him, and he can coast his way towards a second-place finish, 95 points for the 19-year-old from Bory, Finland, the man who's coached by former CrossFit Games champion Miko Salo. Yonikoski, second-place finish, 95 points for him. And here comes Josh Bridges, who will finish in third place. A great start for Josh Bridges, who had a disappointing finish at the Games last year. Bridges was second in 2011. Last year, he was a man many thought could push Rich Froning for the top spot on the podium. And Josh Bridges sets himself up very well heading into the weekend with a third place finish. He needed that one. He really, really did. But man, talk about basically your rookies coming in. Last year, rookie George Troyan making a name for himself. Boom, Yonikoski coming in, making a name for himself. And, and uh, Con Porter right there, making a name for himself. The swimming is starting to become the 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 rookie hello workout. You know, here's where I get to make my name. Nico Salo on the left in that black shirt, congratulating his protege. Con Porter came across the finish line. Another athlete is in. We're trying to identify who that is. It looks like Noah Olson out of the Southeast. Noah Olson, another rookie, a guy who in 2011 told Dave Castro at a regional, I'm going to the games. And Castro said, sure, kid, you go ahead and you do go that. Ahead and do and that. here he is, great finish for Noah Olson. Also has some swimming background. He's a, he's a water polo player, which is going to be great for him because that's a lot of head up, heads up swimming. Wow, he did perfect. One more athlete coming out of the water. As the top five men have finished, Jordan Troyon's your winner. Yonikoski coming in second. Josh Bridges in third. Con Porter in fourth. And it's Noah Olson in fifth place. That is number 63, Craig Kenny, another games rookie. Your top three, though, Jordan Troyon goes sub 30. He edges out Yonikoski, who holds off Josh Bridges for second be place, one, that, 100 what, points don't. for Jordan Troyon, 95 for Koski, and 90 for Josh Bridges. And here comes Rich Froning into the finish line. And this is huge for Rich Froning. He could very well be on top of the leaderboard, depending on what happens tonight. But that overhead squad event looks very good for him. He could be your leader after day one, and he's going to be a tough man to catch going into the weekend. He has to be ecstatic right now. He has to be ecstatic, knowing how he felt last year after this first event, and knowing that he is not just, he's not just doing okay, he's in the top third right now, and that's exactly what he needed, exactly what he needed. Rich Froning, 30th last year in the opening event, his worst finish ever at the CrossFit Games, and that is Jason that's Kalipa, funny. another man who you don't think of when you think of these long events in the water. Jason Kalipa is a guy who has put in a ton of work on swimming, on running, on endurance. So just like Rich, he's got to love that event tonight. He could be <laughs> another man who is on top of the leaderboard. Rich Froning is out of the water, and Rich Froning is looking at a seventh place finish right now. If he can get himself across the finish line before anybody else, Craig Kenny was sixth. Rich Froning, this is Huge for the three-time defending CrossFit Games champion, who also recently became a father. He and his wife, Hillary, adopting a daughter who is here with them. So Rich Froning can add father now to his resume as well. And now a seventh or eighth place finishes. Brandon Swan from Australia has already crossed the finish line. Eighth place finish for Rich Froning. He's got to be so fired up right now. That is unbelievable. That's exactly what he needed to here talking about with the points that puts him in perfect position because this was his throwaway event. And if that's your throwaway event, you come out in eighth place, oh man. These other guys got to look out. And they were saying that this is his last year. That's what he's saying that this is his last year. That is not where you want Rich Froning sitting in that position in this event. Sprint to the finish line is one. Man fell down. It was close. And that oh, is bad. number 33, Kenneth Leverich, who will finish ahead and of the man he was trying to hold off there. So Kenneth Leverich is in 14th place. More athletes have come across the finish line after Froning. Dan Bailey, Scott Panchik, there is your battle between Kenneth Leverich and another athlete. 
Panchik is across the finish line. He will finish 10th. Dan Bailey finished behind Rich Froning in 9th place. Ben Smith coming in at 11th. That's Chris Spieler. He's across the finish line. Cole Sager, the rookie, finishing 12th. Will Moore at his 13th. Kenneth Leverage came in after that. Chris Spieler in at 15th place. As more and more athletes coming across the finish line here and closing out this event. Jacob Hepner finished behind Chris Spieler in 16th. Matt Fraser in 17th. Jason Kalipa, 18th place. And Jordan Cook, another games rookie, finishing in 19th. That's Bjorkman Carl Gudmundsson, another European, making his way out of the water. Gudmundsson looking at a 20th place finish, 50-minute time cap, so less than 13 minutes to go before we hit that. Once the men are done, the women take to the beach. Gudmundsson coming across the finish line, and he will finish in 20th place. Jason Kalipa talking with his judge. Probably saying bro a lot. <laughs> maybe, as he's, maybe a couple as times. As he does. Guy has, a, guy has a lot of energy. <laughs> Another athlete in as 21 have now made it across the finish line nearly half the field for the men. 43 total athletes. That was Lucas Hoper. Another European coming across the finish line. The opening event of the 2014 Joe, Reebok CrossFit Games, the beach. It was worth 100 points to the winner, and those 100 right, points went to Jordan Troyon. Number 51 is James Hobart. James Hobart, a man who has been training somewhat frequently with a champ, Rich Froning. And Hobart was reportedly looking very nervous when this event was laid out in front of him. And now he has to be thankful that it's over. And James Hobart will come in and finish in 22nd place. Whenever you have an event that is the uh, a thorn in your side, your Achilles heel, yes, it, it's terrible sitting on the I haven't done it yet side, but once you get past that finish line, it's like, good, all right, out of my mind, get it out of the way. But you can see some of these athletes just don't have this swimming skill. And the reason Dave Castro likes to put this in is because it tests your overall fitness. It's something that you need to have you can't say that you're a fit athlete if you don't have some sort of ability in the water, and that's why he really likes to use this as one of the tests in this competition. Ben Stoneberg and Kyle Kasperbauer coming out of the water. We've just been told that the time cap, because everyone is doing so well, has now been decreased to 45 minutes. Ben Stoneberg from the Northwest. He's across the finish line. James Hobart was in in 22nd place, and now Stoneberg will finish in 23rd place. Approaching the 40 minute mark once again, the time cap now 45 minutes. Will Morad out of the Central East. Morad coming across the finish line. Morad finishing third in that region and, and beating out a former champion in Graham Holbert. He was a, he was so impressive. We were actually there at that region, and he was very impressed all the way through. I'm really excited to see what he can do. I, I had no idea what he would do in the swim, so I was kind of a wild card event for him. That was Travis Mayer coming across the finish line, and that is Jeff Evans, who is just trying to survive here. Jeff Evans is one of the more powerful athletes in this field. If he can get through this, he gets to get his hands on a barbell tonight, so he will be able to uh, make up some ground with that, this is just the opening event. You're certainly not gonna win the games. Just do damage control on this if this isn't your event. And we have all the LA County lifeguards that are out here to make sure that everyone is safe. You can see them allowing the allowing the athlete to hold on in case they're in danger, but for the most part, trying to brush them off to keep them moving. The, the guards are not supposed to be a rest spot for them. Um, it's more for safety, but you can see that these guards are right there just in case they end up going down. That's not what they wanna have happen. They wanna keep everyone safe just want to test fitness. We don't want to te test life or death by any means. And if Jeff Evans did say that he wanted to get out, they would take him back to the beach where he started. He would have the option of getting back into the water and completing the swim. If he says he doesn't want to get back in, he's out of the event and his CrossFit games are over. So it's important for Jeff Evans just to keep going here. If he's still in the water moving and he hits the time cap, he will not be out. He will still be in the competition. 
there's a ton of distance left for Jeff Evans, so you got to think that he is going to be time capped at 45 minutes. But again, he's in the water, he's making progress, so he will just get to throw this event away. Obviously, it doesn't help him, but tonight he does get his hands on a barbell, and Jeff That's Evans, exactly. I guarantee you, will have an opposite <laughs> That's exactly result of this. Neil Maddox from Northern California, he's out of the water. Maddox, the oldest competitor for the men, 36 years old for Neil Maddox. And he is going to come across the finish line. More athletes have made their way across the finish line. Ben Stoneberg was 23rd. Kyle Kasperbauer finished behind him in 24th. Travis Mayer is in, he finished 25th. Tommy Hackenbrook finishes 26th. Quinton Z. Van Ruyen out of Africa finishes 27th. Jeff Germond, Nate Schrader, and Eric Carmody all across the finish line as well, and now Neil Maddox finishing 31st. So 12 athletes still out there. 45 minute time cap, less than three minutes to go before we hit that. After the men, the women. Copy that. We'll hit the beach. Women are starting to walk out, just FYI. That is Paul Tremblay who is just getting in the water. Hey Jeff, they're not planning on going any his, earlier, are they? Second set of 50 kettlebell thrusters. So Paul okay, Tromblay just so made progress because you're going to get time capped, but he'll still be 10, in the event. Up, right? Alex Nettie, he'll be time capped as well. Thank you. He is working his way through his first set of 25 kettlebell no, thrusters. Alex Nettie, though, another athlete, like getting barbells in his okay, hands, doesn't have a chance sure. to do that tonight. And again, he's just throwing this one away. This, I just need to get through it. I need to not lose my chance at the CrossFit Games so I can have a chance to, like you said, get a hold of a barbell, start moving around. two minutes. And you know, just keep moving. At this point, just keep moving. You'll get time cap and just take whatever place you can get and then move on from there. Rob Forte making his way out of the water and it's important because to know that you still have a chance because the top 20 athletes at the CrossFit Games this year for both men and women get prize money. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too so finish in the top 20 and you're, you're taking home a check. Plus, if you win an event, you also get prize money as well. Rob Forte coming up the beach. Neil Maddox is finished. Tyson cap. Takasaki came in after him in 32nd place. And Pat Burke coming in in 33rd. And now Lucas Parker has to hurry to get himself across the finish line. 20 seconds, minute 20 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. So Lucas Parker out of Canada West, one of the more recognizable faces here at the CrossFit Games, and I'll let you That's sort of why. figure out why. <laughs> and, and, and Lucas, he knew that the swim is not his strong point. Um, he just does what he needs to do. He's a very methodical athlete. Obviously one didn't minute. take time to, to shave down and try to get that aerodynamicness in the water as much as the hydrodynamic that he could in the water. Um, once again, just wants to get this one out of the way and then actually get to the lifting stuff where he really excels. Final athletes making their way out of the water and up the beach is Rob Forte. He was across the finish line in 34th place. Lucas Parker coming across the finish line. He will finish 35th. 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap, and it's important just now for standing purposes to get in inside of that. 20 in the cap. Everyone else is gonna get capped as the final athlete who's gonna make it across the finish line is now in. Albert Dominique LaRouche has finished and Marcus Philly you just saw come across the finish line. He finishes in 37th. So six men will get time capped at 45 minutes. The first event for the men is in the books. And that is Paul Tremblay who is a rookie out of Canada East. Trouble is used to water, but when it's in a frozen state, he is a guy who did this thing called crashed ice racing, where they build a downhill track in the middle of a city. You go down there and you basically just beat the tar out of one another in a race. It's still on hockey skates, so he, he would much prefer if this water were frozen. Alex Nettie is still on the beach, and then Jeff Evans on the surfboard right there. All of these men are still alive, even though they got time down. That's exactly what they needed. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. Get this one out of the way, start moving on to the other events. One more event for the men, and that will be tonight inside the tennis stadium at the Stub Up Center. It's the one rep max overhead squat. And Jeff Evans, one of the strongest athletes in the sport, who you saw on the board there getting towed back into shore, as is Paul Tremblay. But Jeff Evans, once he gets his hands on a barbell, can do some serious damage. 
top 10 from the first event of the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. And for the second straight year, it's Jordan Troyon winning the opening event. The only man to go sub 30, Yonikoski, the 19-year-old from Finland, will finish second. And it's Josh Bridges in third. And right off the bat, Jordan Troyon on the right of your screen got himself into the water, and that was pretty much all she wrote. It said, they said go, and he stayed at the front the entire time. So efficient, so smooth in the water, did exactly what we thought he would do. Just so impressive. He did get reeled in a little shots, bit Rodney. when he got to the kettlebells, but then when he got himself back into the One water on that longest leg of the swim, he, you mentioned pick, this, pick looked, looked shot. fresher than he did when he got out. Amanda Krenz is with our event winner. didn't come out of this without any battle wounds. Let's talk about your arms a little bit. What happened? Yeah, during the, uh, the kettlebell thrusters, I started to feel a little like sand rubbing against hey, my Joe, shoulders and didn't really feel it that much in the okay. workout when I was done. I'm hearing a little a bit of a, a rash on my so. shoulder, but it's not nothing crazy. You and almost every other guy, I think. Yeah. How did you plan to pace this one? You off for a while, Just, you know, I'll pace the 250 meter swim to, to come out of the gates. I wanted to make sure to no, no, swim no, a straight was, course as well, so you, I was picking I'm some landmarks to follow on the beach just to make sure I was swimming straight and not, you know, zigzagging or right, just so going out of this, out of this or swimming more than I have to. So that's with ocean swimming, it's all about swimming a straight course. How does this compare with anything that you've ever done before? I'm pretty used to this. I used to lifeguard down in Seattle City, New Jersey on the beach patrol for seven summers. So every Friday night we had lifeguard races. So I'm pretty used to this type of race. Well, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Billboards on red. Jordan Tryon, 100 points for the second straight year, winning the opening event. Other finishers here, Ben Smith finishing at 11th. How about Jason Kalipa there in 18th? Jason Kalipa, awesome, but now. I'm super excited about Chris Spieler getting back in there. He's back at the games. Nice little show in there at 15th position coming out of the swim. That's the swimming event's not going to be one of his strong things. That was awesome. The men are done. The women are up next. We'll be back with the opening event for them at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. The 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games are brought to you by Reebok, the exclusive outfitter of CrossFit and the CrossFit Games. One, end of the billboard. Jordan Troyon leads the way for the men as 43 competitors are vying for the title of Fittest on Earth. And for the second straight year, it's Jordan Troyon winning the opening event. The women are up next. We'll be back at Hermosa Beach. On X. It's on X. She's going to push to it. Two, one, push to the break. Push to the, I got to push to the break. No. All right, so we are in a CrossFit three minute. This means nothing to you. 90 to the stub hub center, changing to the slate. Yes. Carrie, I don't think it's a good idea to tie those the, the, the rollout to the to the commercials. That didn't seem to work. One minute to the stub hub, changing to the slate. Two minutes to your ESPN break. Stop hub, making the switch. Twenty seconds to stop hub, making the switch to the slate. Fifteen to the slate. Stop hub, make your switch in ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Stop hub, switch in five, four, three, two, one. Stop hub, make your switch. 